Some horror films terrify through inescapably realistic fears. Others create monsters that amplify primordial terrors to the umpteenth degree. But some, like writer and director Dario Argento's 1977 Italian giallo horror film Suspiria, envelop the viewer in an inescapable, reality-bending world akin to a nightmare. Telling the story of an American ballerina named Susie, played by Jessica Harper, who comes to a German ballet school only to be caught up in a twisted and mystical murder mystery, Suspiria isn't a film that astonishes through its narrative, but rather through its terrifying style. While Suspiria is a movie that slowly feeds its audience clues concerning the central mystery at hand, the point of Argento's blood-soaked masterpiece is to drench the audience in mood and an inescapable terror. Yes, the central characters themselves are seeking to get to the bottom of what is actually happening at this clearly sinister ballet academy, but the experience of shock and awe far outweighs any audience desire to discover the truth about this admittedly paltry mystery. And the key to that experience is Argento's use of astonishing, unforgettable colors. These colors create an otherworldly atmosphere that leave a lasting impression and work in tandem with how Suspiria establishes and shifts its mood from scene to scene. The result is a film that feels like a nightmare come to life, and cinematography that matches narrative in its increasing detachment from the rules of reality. From the opening frames, there is something off-kilter about the world of Suspiria. As Susie arrives in the country on her way to the academy, a simple German airport is bathed in nightmarish reds and blues while prog rock band Goblin's iconic theme slowly kicks in. As our protagonist makes her way into a technicolor rain-soaked night, the audience is pulled into a heightened and wild world alongside her. Nothing is quite what it seems, and as the academy becomes more and more insane around Susie, we find ourselves trying to grab hold and make sense of our surroundings, just like the lead character. From very stilted acting to gallons of blood that have the same color and viscosity as house paint, the very nature of this dreamlike horror almost justifies the odd nature of these various elements. Why wouldn't the people here act like this? Why shouldn't the blood look so incredibly odd? It's clear that we've been chucked into a devilish abyss and must now fight our way out. So is Suspiria's dizzying disregard of logic and mind-bending tone the result of a complete mastery of filmmaking or just a happy coincidence of bravado and ignorance? Well, it's somewhat hard to tell. It's clear that acting isn't Argento's strong suit as a director, Sarah, language barrier or not. I once read that names which begin with the letter S are the names of snakes. Argento had each actor or actress speak in their native tongue and dub the film later depending on region, as was common with many Italian films at the time. And precise narratives aren't his forte either, which quickly becomes clear upon viewing other Argento films from across the decades. It's also easy to become lost concerning character motivations or narrative structure on the first viewing of Suspiria. But an effective horror film is an effective horror film, so who are we to judge how it came to be? Argento's creation is best remembered for its experiential nature, and there are two massive components to Suspiria's success as a nightmarish work of genius, its cinematography and its music. It's no secret that color influences and informs mood in both real life and film. While many filmmakers choose to weave these elements into their films through subtle yet consistent strategies, Argento and cinematographer Luciano Tivoli opt to overwhelm the viewer with color. As a fairly simple horror film with few metaphors on its mind, Suspiria's use of color seeks to amplify feelings of terror and revulsion through the primary uses of red and green. While scenes set in daytime keep a fairly muted color scheme in order to emphasize feelings of safety while the sun is out, the color palette immediately switches to the bold and bizarre as night falls in order to reflect the oncoming threat of death. Frequently, Argento lit his scenes by placing colored gauze over set lights, resulting in sets being drenched in bold, single colors. In addition, the director had sets painted with bright, repeating color patterns that show up time and time again throughout the film. These patterns also highlight the German Expressionist approach to set architecture seen everywhere in Suspiria, which creates high, impossibly angled walls that seem to loom over and close in on Susie and her fellow ballerinas. In both techniques, an unnatural quality is highlighted to reflect the nightmarish supernatural dangers lurking everywhere. Argento shot Suspiria on anamorphic lenses and processed the film via Technicolor IB prints, which emphasized bold primary colors through dye transfer to a greater degree than other forms of Technicolor. 
The process was similarly used for The Wizard of Oz and Gone with the Wind, both well known for their vivid color palettes, with Suspiria being one of the final feature films to ever be processed in Technicolor. The result is a horror film that looks like none other, whereas most other horror films of the time, and most in the decades after, leaned heavily on murky nights, desaturated hues, and the use of few colors, Argento injected Suspiria with eye-popping reds, pinks, purples, and blues, which burst from both daytime and nighttime scenes. Beyond the simple fact that these off-putting colors are everywhere, the vibrancy of Suspiria highlights the otherworldliness of the story, planting it firmly in a place where the rules of reality do not always apply, and something gruesome and terrible could happen at any moment. Yet the characters typically do not make note of the Technicolor world around them, even when sleeping in a blood-red dormitory or being bathed in an otherworldly light without a discernible source. It's up to the audience to process the expressionist use of colors and sets without an in-film explanation. These aesthetics do not reflect reality, but rather the mood and creeping psychosis of the unknowable evil lurking within the school. If the colors of Suspiria are in-your-face madness, then the film's score is crafted to creep under your skin and constantly unsettle you. Filled with guttural growls, ringing bells, echoing drums, whining organs, and the strange sound of a bazooki, a Greek string instrument, Goblin's score to Suspiria is unsettling and thrilling. Heavily steeped in the jazz influence of progressive rock, Goblin's score alternates between settling into the background to quietly unnerve the audience and looming large and loud to amplify the terror on screen. Goblin's work here is one of the defining qualities of Suspiria, and one that has left a permanent impression on fans of the film. The band's propulsive, unconventional sounds feel like a stranger leaping out of the darkness and yanking you into a room full of horrors. It's disconcerting at times and frequently frightening, but that's what a great horror score should do. These various elements work together to pull the viewer further down into the ghoulish nightmare that is Suspiria. And while the film may be renowned for its pulse-pounding, blood-strewn kills, it's not as gory as you may suspect. Rather, Argento masterfully ratchets up the tension through his use of lurid colors, kinetic editing, and the constant score until sudden bursts of violence hit the screen. And while the very fake blood may run like water, it's the ferocity and terrifying ideas at play that scare the most. Scenes like a victim falling into a room full of razor wire send shivers and gasps. Not because of any gruesome special effects work, the scene is surprisingly light on blood, but because of the squirm-inducing idea and seemingly interminable length of the scene. By the time we reach the film's climax, the terror and constant threat of violent death has been hanging over the audience and protagonist Susie for so long that every last nerve has been shredded. The nightmares close in and the dizzying array of technicolor arrangements become inescapable, forcing Susie to face the maddening horrors around her. Once they are conquered, the dreamlike world begins to fall apart. Quite literally in this instance, embodied in the form of the school crumbling and bursting into flames. And just like a nightmare that has been overcome, Suspiria comes to an abrupt end. No denouement, no time to breathe, just credits. After all, what else could there be to say in a film like this? It's only once the dream is ended that the dreamer can reflect and wonder about the weird and wild circumstances of what they have just experienced. The collision of kaleidoscopically colored terrors with a brashly violent narrative makes Suspiria wonderfully gripping from start to finish, never letting viewers gain proper footing in a world that is slowly going mad. The thrills of Suspiria and the catharsis of conquering the nightmare make viewers want to dive back in again and again to re-experience Argento's one-of-a-kind technicolor terror.